Before the GFA announced Kwesia PS exit three years ago, everyone on the streets of Ghana knew the word. It was a badly kept secret. We were convinced in our minds that when he had done well, um, given all the circumstances that prevailed, and we were convinced, fully convinced, that he had done well. But since the extension of the contract um, to the moment we decide to part company, remember we didn't say we were sacking him, we said we were parting company. Lots of things happened in the background that both him and us agreed as part of our severance deal not to discuss in public. So it was the basis upon which we decided to part company. So you want to get the understanding then? It wasn't that Chris Apia was sacked? Absolutely the not. The statement we released said we parted company, okay. which, mean that, which means that we had agreed to go our separate ways. I thought that we could have done a lot more better in the sense that, you see, if you look at the time I came, mm -hmm. I think we were left, I think, three or four months to the couple of nations. I, this, I had something in me, you know, to try to encourage our local players and at the same time the local league. Yeah. So the first competition I took, I think, four or five local players to that competition. And then secondly, you no, know, I had an ambition that, look, Ghana, we got to a stage where uh, sometimes some of our players, oh, I won't play for Ghana again. And everyone was crying. It's like we had no one in place. So my ambition those when I came the first time was, look, let me bring a whole lot of young guys so that even if, uh, in a year's time we don't get anything from them by uh, after a year or two, you know, they will represent the nation. So um, bringing in a whole lot of players, we were able to go to a couple of nations and go to semifinals and then use the same young guys with some few, you know, uh, some few um, senior players, you know, to get to the World Cup stage. So it's something that I think that the next coach after me should have continued yeah. and gave, if he had given um, the young guys, many of them also opportunities, we would have had a whole lot of a pool of players to pick from. And that's, for me, that's what I believe in. It's a, it's a whole nation's team. Yeah. It's not like a club where you are limited to 25 or 30 no. players. Ghana has got thousands of players, yeah. but it's about giving the opportunity to play. But if you call the players and you don't give them the opportunity to play, what is the essence of calling them in the first place? Because it's not about me judging who is good. It should be all Ghanaians say, okay, oh, this guy came, he played, he did well. So if um, Samajan is not there, oh, he can also play. Mm. But we've not been doing that. so. We are always over dependent on very few players. Kwesi Apia left and Avram Grant, former Chelsea trainer, was brought in. Apia, after leaving Ghana, went to Sudan where he managed Sudanese Premier League side Al Khartoum. Khartoum, not as big as Al Hilal and Al Merik, but Apia managed to build a team that competed with them. At some point, he was named manager of the season in Sudan. Initially, it was a bit difficult, but I actually loved the challenge. Mm. You know, traveling to another world, you know, another country to showcase what you have. And the good thing is, when I went there, my ambition was, look, this, let's take this as a project. Let me build a team for you. And the management were so, so appreciative in the sense that they, that is what they also, they, that's what they were looking for. They agreed and I decided to, in the first year, to bring about 10 young players to the team. And at the end of a year, you know, I had four of them going to the national team, the younger ones. So they understood where I was coming from. So the following year, I added a lot of, uh, I added another six. And then I think the third year, I think by the time I left, we had about 22 young players who had been promoted to the first team. Awesome. You know, the good thing is, uh, 
out of the, apart from the four who were playing for the national team, five of them were with the Olympic team, mm -hmm. and then uh, we had, I think, two or three of them also playing for the under twenties. So it was, um, and now in Sudan, if you go to Sudan now, people are talking about the my cool. team. Yeah. You know, yeah, in the sense that they had one club who always put the ball down and play. You know, the many of the clubs there, you know, they just play a long one and keep mm -hmm. fighting. But we always want to start the attack from behind and try to end uh, in the post. But the other things, many of them are really young and the project was for four years. Mm -hmm. So that by the end of four years, you know, we should start achieving, you know, lorries for, for the club. And you won coach of the year as well there? Yeah, um, that's why even when I was leaving, you know, it was a big blow, not to yeah. only my club, you know, the Sudanese Federation and anywhere we went, they appreciated the, the fact that, you know, I've changed the team that they used to know. And you read a lot at some point, they didn't even wanted to make you head coach of the Sudanese team. Yeah, they approached me, and but the only unfortunate thing, they wanted me to handle my club and the <laughs> national team as well. Oh, okay. So I said, no, this hard job, because the thing is, if for instance I'm handling my team, and my team is playing the match, I can't leave my team and go and monitor yeah. the rest of the uh, players. So um, I decided not to you know, take it. Either I take that as a full-time job or I stay with my club. Try to know. Now he's back as Black Stars coach and the nation is wide awake with lots of expectations. Even though to the average observer, the qualification to the World Cup finals in Russia looks like an impossible task, especially when one of the toughest opposition Egypt has six points clear of the Black Stars who have only E points. For me, I've flanked a lot. You know, there are, there are so many things that where else I was in Sudan, because you know in Sudan we don't go out, you only go out in the evening to train and you come back home only watching telly. So most of the time I was sitting back and looking, you know, back at what really went wrong, what went right. And there were so many things that I thought, um, you know, I did wrong. There were so many decisions that I thought, okay, maybe if I had done it this way it would have helped. So. It's made me learn a lot and uh, become stronger and a better person, you know. Unlike the first time, because the first time, that was my first experience of being the head coach of a national team. So, um, within two years, there's not, not much you can learn. But uh, whilst in Sudan, you know, uh, I was able to look back and make sure that, you know, there are so many petty, petty, the states that went on, you know, on and off the pitch, that I think um, needs to be improved. Or oh, there are so many things that needs to be changed, you know. And it's like you don't need to keep making the same mistakes yeah. again. And there are so many things that you know the FA management also needs to change, okay. which have you know started, you know, drawing the attention to. Oh. And for me, it's about the future of the country, it's not about me, uh -huh. you know, so uh, day in, day out, you know, we all keep learning and um, I believe that um, it's making me more stronger. Okay. We thought he was good, he was good. but circumstances, but circumstances then, then did not per um, permit us to be able to so continue. What has changed? A lot has changed. Um, the trajectory uh, has changed. Foreign coaches have come and gone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have also compared the work of some of the foreign coaches who came under him. Um, he has also gone to Sudan. He has done a great job in Sudan, where uh, also runs like Al Khartoum. Mm -hmm. In Sudan, you talk about Al Hilal or Al Marik. Or, you know, these are the top teams in Sudan with big budgets and all of those things. But Al Khartoum, before Kwesiapi had gone, there, how many Ghanaians had even heard of Al Khartoum? Because they were also runs, mm. a middle rank team. He took them from an also run team to take them to the uh, Sekafa level to play in the Sekafa tournament, and I think they got out at the quarter final or semi final. Mm. You know, 
that tells you that it's made project with the same thin budget, not comparable to what Al Marih or uh, Al Hilal have. But is able to punt above its weight. He played in the Confederations Cup the same. If, for instance, he had had you know the budgets that Al Marik and Al Hilal had, you would have imagined the impact you would have made. This has given him a broader picture, a broader perspective of what it is. It has also given us a broader picture after Avram had left, mm -hmm. and a broader perspective. So we think that with all of these experiences. It, it fits in well. Not only that, but he went before a panel. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Is it, isn't it more important that the same football association thinks he's good enough now for the job? That should be the most important factor. What the football association thought in the past has not stopped the football association from giving him the job now. So it obviously means that the football association have decided that whatever their doubts about his competences were then, that they are convinced that those competence, those, those failings have been overcome, one, or two, that they are not strong enough to prevent him from doing a good job. I would rather read meaning into that because which is the bigger decision that has been made here? Mm -hmm. The attempt to get a technical advisor or the attempt to hand the man a two-year contract worth over $30,000 a month. Obviously, the attempt is, is handing him a contract. That's a bigger statement of faith in his competence than anything else that's happened. And that's the only thing that matters as of now. Apia has gained a lot of experience in the handling of the Black Stars and as of now, he has mastered all the causes of their previous failures in assembling the best for the nation and how to get a squad prepared for the battle. Celesteta is a former coach of the Black Stars and remains the only coach on the African continent to have won the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Bobo, as he is popularly known, has an advice for Coach Chris Apia. First of all, you should look to God first. And thank God that he has, he has returned back to the job he left some time ago. It's few persons that will get this opportunity. So he should do his best. Open his mind. Go deep into the profession. And I remind him that he is capable. I remind him that he is capable. And I will wish him well. And uh, let him know he shouldn't underrate any situation at all. In this profession, some coaches have worked, worked and reached this stage. This is his time. He has to print his name there. Print his name there, and this is an opportunity for him to do it. The Ghana Football Association has decided to let the main Black Stars coach handle the local Black Stars. The first time this happened was during Coach Milvan Rava's reign from 2009 to 2011. We want to make him succeed, and we see the benefits of it. Tomorrow, when there's a chance between you and a competing foreign journalist to do something for Mother Ghana, people will be able to point to Kwetiapia and say that when we gave a chance to a Ghanaian, he was able to deliver. Let's give the chance to you. Because, look, mind you, as a Ghanaian, if you go outside to go and work, you start on a back foot. You know why? Because you are a foreigner. Everybody would love to prefer that the natives of their country take up these positions first. If there are no hands, that is when you bring in foreigners. So in the same light, let's ensure that he succeeds. And his success story is not only a success story for a national team, but it's a success story for all Ghanaians. Today, if a Ghanaian footballer, you know, is done with his playing career abroad, how many of them are picked up by the foreign teams they might have played for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years to become coaches? They are not. At the end of the day, he has decided that he wants to contribute $5,000 of his monthly salary 
to the betterment of the fortunes of coaches and old players in this country. If for nothing at all, this money is staying here in this country to give somebody some food to it. Things really went well for both teams as some local players also had the opportunity to get into the Black Stars Team A. Coach Celastete, who is now technical advisor for Ghana Premier League side Liberty Professionals, thinks Kusia Pia handling both teams will help in the development of the game. I believe that that will motivate the local league, especially talking about the players, motivate them. And uh, I also believe that at a given time, the local players are more hungrier. They are more hungrier. So when they feel that they have been given opportunity, yeah, it will encourage them, it will motivate them. So uh, I, I believe that uh, it is going to help the league, the, the level of the league, the, the performances of players in the league. And uh, that will also, when the, the level of the game improves, that will also attract people to be paying attention to the game. And that will also be open opportunities to players. So it, it will be great. It's good because it allows for a seamless integration of both teams. It's no guarantee that because Milo did well, Apia will do well. It's no guarantee because the level of materials would have changed. You've got different matches to play. But a lot of countries have integrated that. I Burkina Faso, this, South Africa, Ivory Coast, Algeria, everywhere, local blasters coach handles them in one. Because we easily forget these days those games are classified international A games, which means that they matter as much as Blasters games. It makes sense that you put one man in charge. Mm -hmm. So for the local players, it's a good thing. For Apia himself, it keeps him a lot more occupied. I think it's a better way of saving money than throwing back someone to the locals again. And, and that would, would help him a lot. One of the players who got a chance to revive his professional career under Kwisia Pia is goalkeeper Fatal Dauda. The man known as Lion was with Ashanti Gold when Kwisia Pia made him number one at the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa. Dauda, after that competition, moved from Ghana to join Orlando Pirates in South Africa. How big was he in terms of uh, the influence he had on your career, international career? Well, I think uh, uh, Coach is a nice person, you know. Mm -hmm. He gave me the opportunity to play in the AFCON 2013. Yeah. But we have a very good goalkeeper, Squarese is there, mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Ejie is yeah. there. You know, football is about, it's about opportunity. Mm -hmm. Not that by then I was too special, more than yeah, the other goalkeepers. But I just had the opportunity to play in goal in that tournament. I remember in 2014 when you were playing in South Africa, uh, during the Chan tournament, he came there, spoke to you, so when he left as a Black Stars coach and went to Sudan, were you in contact with him? Well, were you I always I chatting and having... I wasn't in the team with the... No, not chance. the Chan. I mean, when you were playing in South Africa, during the Chan, you were yeah. with Orlando Pirates. Sure. Yeah. He came there and spoke to you. That was when we were preparing for the World Cup. Sure, he came, yeah, he came, he came yeah. to uh, South Africa, I Yeah, South Africa. I was, but then I was, Rashid, Rashid's yeah, was, was also met, We met coach. Yeah. We, we made up, uh, we shadowed uh, the program and then yeah. we meet in Pretoria. He was there to, I mean, encourage them to see how we are doing. You know, by then I was having difficult, I'm not playing. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians were, were worried that I'm not playing. Dauda is one of the players thrilled to have Coach Kusiapia back in the team. Well, Kusiapia has a soft talking, calm demeanor, and that may be for the cameras. Because when he gets to the dressing room where the steam, the calmness evaporates, Leaving Dauda and his teammates with a firm and stern coach who requires nothing but a win. Because he has been a former player before, so mm. we, share, we share jokes with him, we laugh together. And then one thing I like about him, if, if I'm not doing well, you tell me I don't do well. Wow. He needs me to, I mean, lift up my game. Mm. So, sometimes so he was always sincere with you? Sincere. He, he doesn't want me to, although I'm playing regularly under him, but mm. he doesn't give me chances or something like that. Okay. If I made a mistake. He put me right, he wanted me to I mean, come up. So sometimes you see players, some coaches will be shouting on players. Not that the coach doesn't like you, he wants mm. you to come up and do your best for, for, for the team and then for yourself. So he's a very nice man. The dancing Ghana, Ghana is a great football nation hungry to win a major trophy. 
Kusiapia has a difficult job to satisfy mountains of expectations from millions of unforgiving supporters. What are benchmarks? Benchmarks is to try and qualify the team for the World Cup. You, you're mixing two things up. Saying you want to qualify for the World Cup doesn't mean you must qualify at all costs. And it doesn't mean if you don't qualify for the World Cup, it means Apia has failed. I'm saying if we don't qualify for the World Cup, it will be in no way a reflection of Apia, how bad Apia is as a coach. Mm -hmm. Far from that. If we don't win the Nations Cup, that's a different thing. I think the Nations Cup, winning the Nations Cup, is a realistic benchmark. Qualifying for a World Cup, you are five points behind already. It's asking a bit too much of the coach. Yes, he will give his absolute best, I think, to get the team there. But if he doesn't, really, you can beat yourself up about it. So 2017 to 2019, what do you anticipate? Hopefully Ghana becomes a bit more competitive than we've been, a bit more serious. Uh, hopefully we can restore a bit of pride in the national team again. Well, in this first thing, we did a lot. One, um, we gave him the same opportunities as the foreign coaches, and even more. One, we gave him the opportunity to negotiate for his own salary. Two, uh, we gave him all the opportunities where to go, be to go abroad, to go and monitor players, be to have a video analyst to look into selection of players or monitoring of players. Three, even augmenting the backroom staff. Mm. At a point in time, apart from Kweku, who's our video analyst, we brought a video analyst at his own recommendation from Manchester City to add to his backroom staff. And all the things we do, even at a point we arranged for him to go to Manchester City, Liverpool, and all of those things. We've done all of those things. And if we feel that there's any need for him to be given any extra support, we will. If he puts this thing in front of us, we will support him. If he tells us that he needs this thing, we will do it. If we find that there's also a need for him to do something to enhance his work, we will also do it. Personally, what do you want to see change from the old PC up here to the new one? Well, one thing, the only thing <laughs> I would love to see is that he lives in a country where he speaks the language. People know him. He should blank out the criticism from the media. Friends, former colleagues, colleagues who call and say, oh, do this, do that, do this, do that. He should blank them out. And I say it for good reason. When we were on the verge of qualifying for the World Cup, what had happened? We were enjoying a very, very smooth campaign, weren't we? Yeah. Then the, the noise started. Oh, bring in some of the old players. Bring in this person, bring in that person, bring in that person. When some of these players came and caused trouble in the team, we didn't see one of those who made such recommendations. And it's sad eh? when people make such contributions, and as a Ghanaian, and our nature, as people who listen, you listen to advice, you listen to contributions, and the rest. And he didn't do it in a bad way. He did it because it's in our nature to want to listen, to hear second opinion, stuff like that. But you realize that upon second reflection, people have got all sorts of motivations for wanting you to bring this person in, bring that person in, you know, bring this person in, bring that person. I want him to stand on his feet like he does all the time. Blank all of those things out. People will talk, they will call radio stations to say all sorts of things. Blank them out. Keep on his convictions like he has done in the past. Be convinced about what he does and follow it. Let God be his guide. He need their support. He need their support, which of course I know they will do that. I don't have doubt on that. Yes, need their support. My constitution is only on the ball. I'm not looking at the man. However, there is a sense that Kwisiya Pia still has an unfinished business with the Black Stars, and his return offers him an opportunity to instigate his 15-year plan, which he had hoped would lead to a first Afghan success 
since 1982. I think what we as a nation should know is that we should ask this question. What do we need in our football now, especially the Blasters? Do we want to build a team or we want to rely on what we have? And you see, I keep saying this. Me, I'm a Ghanaian, and where God has risen me, I think it's more than enough. But I'm looking at it from this angle. If I'm even with the Blasters for one month, or let's say for one year, I should be seen to be bringing something on board. And what I mean, what I want to do is to make sure that you see we have every position, we should have three competing players, you know, fighting for the jersey. That's my ambition. You see, when you have that, you don't have, you never have indiscipline in the team. You never have, you know, disunity in the team. You always have the players fighting, you know, to wear the jersey. And once you have players fighting for the jersey, you always get results on the pitch. And so that is my ambition, to make sure we have a lot of players, you know, and I don't want a situation where only Coach Apia is calling. I want Ghanaians to also see that, look, if he's not sick or he's not there, oh, this one can also play. Mm. Ghanaians should be able to say that. You see, once that is done, then Ghana, Ghanaians who come from their homes, oh, I'm going to watch this player mm. or that player, because they know what they can do. You know, so that is something that's on my heart. You know, and maybe in a way it's also good that we are I'm handling the local blasters. It also gave me the opportunity to know what each and every player can also do. So that you know, it also give them opportunity to showcase what they can do. Mm. Mm. And winning a title too will be something that you'll be looking forward to. I mean, I believe that every coach's ambition, you know, is to make sure that, you know, he wins laurels for either a club or for the national team. And for me, um, I would love uh, it's something that is on my heart and I believe that, you see, anything that's on your heart and you pray over it, it's, there's nothing that's impossible in the sight of God. And I've always had believed that every step that I take, I rely on my God and, you know, I, most of the time, 100% achieve almost everything. But um, saying that, you know, it's important how we psych our players to go out there and fight for our nation. Once you have that done, automatically players will go fight and make sure that they achieve the, the main aim, which is to win laurels for, for our nation. And um, that is my ambition, and I hope God will bless you. My name is Benedict Owusu, and all I can say is good luck to Coach Kwisiya Pia on his second coming as Black Stars coach. Mandela!